Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to be talking about editing records in a form based on multiple tables in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Lena in St. Petersburg, Florida. Just a hop, skip, and a jump away from me. Lena says, I've got a form based on a query with four different tables in it. It seems like whenever I make changes to one of the fields, strange things happen. Sometimes I can't add a new record. Sometimes I get an error message. Sometimes I think I'm editing one field and I end up changing three other things. What am I doing wrong? Well, Lena, honestly, you really want to try basing your forms off of one table at a time. Now, if you want to display information from other tables, that's okay. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute but you cannot reliably edit records from multiple tables in a form that's based on a query with lots and lots of different tables in it. I've literally had people send me forms that are based on queries that look like that. And I just have to tell them, look, the query is way too complicated. You have to scale that down a little bit. Most of the time, what'll happen if your query is too complex, you'll get an error message that says this record set is not updatable. That means you got to simplify that query that the form is based on. I have a whole video based on this, so go watch this one. I'll put a link down below for you. But Lena, let's go through an example of how to properly set up a form that might be based on multiple tables. Now, first, some prerequisites. The database I'm going to be using is my blank template. So if you haven't watched this one, go watch this video. And also watch the contacts video. We're going to add contacts to it. Now, in order to add contacts and customers together, You've got to know how relationships work, so go watch my relationships video if you don't know how to relate two tables together. And while you're at it, watch this one too, relational combo boxes, where you can pick a customer on the order form, for example. These are all free videos. If you don't understand any of these concepts, go watch these. They're on my YouTube channel. They're on my website. You'll find links you can click on down below in the description below the video. Okay, so let's say we want to build a form based on just two tables. We'll keep it simple, just two tables. Let's say customers and contacts. Now, if you watch those other videos, you'll know I've got a customer form, and each customer can have multiple contacts. And the contact is when you basically talk to that customer or do something for them, right? All about a job, came in for an interview. Each one of these is a contact, not a person, a contact, right? Like when you, you know, contact, like when you touch something, it's a contact, right? Get it? Okay. So... Let's say you want to build a form showing all of the contacts and the related customer information. So let's build a query, create query design. I'm going to bring in the contact table and the customer table, right? I want a list of contacts and the related customer information. Okay. So what do I want to see from the contact table? Well, I want to see the contact ID and the date and let's say the description. Okay, and then next to that, I want to see who the customer was. So first name, last name, and let's say phone number. Okay, and I'm going to save this, control S, as my contact queue, my contact query. So now when I run this, that's the information that I see. And that looks good. It's pretty much all I want right now. All right, I got the contact date, I got a description, and I can see who it was that the contact is for. Now, first thing, notice that the customer information might double up because these two contacts are for this same customer. Okay, that's fine. And I can come over here and change things if I want to, right? Okay, that's not a problem. Can I change the customer information over here? Let's see. All right. And then, oh, oh, wait a minute. Notice that. Be careful with that. See, when you make a change over here, you're not changing stuff in the contact table. Now you're changing information in the customer table and every one of those records, right? For that customer, you'll see that updates the new information in the customer table. So be careful about that. All right. And if you've got multiple tables, all right, you might not realize what field that table is coming from unless you're very careful about it. All right. What about adding new records? Let's come over here and try to add a new one. Let's add a new contact down here i'll start typing in something and i'm trying to type and oh wait i can't do it what's happening down here look at cannot add records join key of table contact t is not in the record set what does that mean well i don't have the join field listed here what's the join field what joins these two things together the customer id okay let's go back and add the customer id here's customer id all right and let's run it and now let's try to add and oh hold on 
Microsoft Access Database Engine cannot recognize if I can find the record in the customer team with the matching field. What does that mean? Well, it can't create the relationship between these two because you don't have customer ID from this table in there as well. Okay. All right. So let me hit escape. Let me add customer ID again. Right click, design view, bring in the customer ID from this table. Now you got two of them. All right. Run it. Okay, now I got a second new over here, and now I got customer T and contact T dot customer ID. See, this just gets really complicated and complex. Okay, and you have to be careful which one's from what table, and I, it, it's just messy. Can you do it? Yeah, at this point now, we can add a record here. Okay, but we have to make sure we join these up properly. So this contact, uh, let's give it customer 2, and then it'll link it up to James Kirk. But uh, you see what I'm saying? This is messy. And this is only two tables. You got three or more tables in here. It gets pretty crazy. So what I want you to do moving forward is I want you to keep this thought in your head. When you're going to build a form, the form itself should only be based on one table. One table that you're going to edit the information from. If you want to edit the customer information, make it based on the customer table. If you want to edit the contact information, based on the contact table. Now, you can bring in additional fields to display information. Like just displaying this stuff in the form, that's not a problem. But you don't really want to let the user edit that stuff. If they want to edit that, open up the customer form to edit that. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go back in here and let's get rid of this customer ID from the customer table. We don't want that there. And I'm going to bring this customer ID. I'm going to slide this over to the left. I want to keep all my contact T stuff together. Okay, this is the stuff I can edit. And then this stuff over here, I want to have there so we can display it. All right, but we're not going to let the user change this stuff. And we're not going to let our users work directly in queries. So let's go build a form off of this. If you look at this here, this is okay. All right, I can safely edit this stuff. All right, but we don't want the user to change this stuff because it gets messy. So here's what we're going to do. Let's save this, close it. All right, now if you watch those other two videos I pointed you to, you'll know there's a customer list, and I can double click on one of these customers to open up that customer's form. And I can click on contacts over here to open up this contacts form. All right, that's the way to get to it if you want to edit the contacts. Okay, there's also another form that I built, which is the customer with contacts. This is how I prefer editing stuff like this. Okay, you got the customer over here, and you got contacts as a subform on the main customer form. Want to learn more about subforms? Guess what? Got a subforms video. I'll put a link down below. Now, since I've already got a contact form built, let's just modify this guy. Let's make a copy of it first. Let's copy paste. We'll call this the contact list F. All right, the contact list F. And what we're going to do is we're going to come at this from a different, uh, a different angle. Instead of pulling up the customer and seeing his contacts, I want to pull up a list of all the contacts and see the related customers. So this guy is based on my contacts table. Let's change it now to the contact query. Now, what is this going to do for us? Well, now I can use those other fields that I pulled into that query to display information about the customer. And just to keep things easy, I'm going to get rid of the stuff down here. We don't need this. So we're going to just keep, keep the example simple. Okay. I got the contact date, the description, and now I'm going to bring over the first name, last name, and phone number right into here in the detail section. I can get rid of these labels here. Delete, delete, delete. All right, there's first name, there's last name, and there's phone number. Okay. And let's size these guys to the grid real quick. Size to grid. And we'll shrink that up. All right, save it. And let's open it back up again. Okay. Looks like the results we had in the query, right? But I don't want the user to be able to edit this stuff. Because again, we get into messy territory. So what I'm going to do is right-click, design view. We're going to lock those fields. I'm going to select all these. Right-click, go to properties. And then find the data tab and turn locked to yes. All right. That's going to prevent the user from editing these fields. We don't want them to be able to edit those fields. That's when, that's when crazy stuff starts to happen. In addition, I like to make them a light gray. That way you can still see what's in there, but it just kind of visually tells the user you can't mess with this stuff. You can't change it here. 
Okay, so save it, close it, and then open it back up again. And now you can get a nice concise list of all of your contacts. Right, you can see the contact information, and then you can see the information for who it's with. This is handy if you're doing like your follow-ups, for example. You want the list of all the contacts, the people you got to follow up with, and and right here handy is their name and and phone number. Okay, but you don't want the user to be able to come in here and click on this stuff and mess with it. All right. Now, could you let the user change this information by changing, for example, the customer ID? Sure, we could put a combo box here so they can pick who the customer is for this contact, right? Now, I already have a customer ID built on my order form. All right, this is a combo box right here. I cover building that combo box in my invoicing video if you want to go watch that. It's basically based on this query here that's got customer last name and first name put together into one field, right? We concatenate those things, okay? But I can steal this combo box, right? Click design view. We can copy this guy, right? Copy, close that, close that. Let's come back to that contact list form, design view, and I'll just paste it right in here, all right? And we'll make some room for it. So let's take you. And we'll slide over. You know what? This box has last name and first name in it, so I don't even need those fields now. Delete those. Delete that. Slide this up here. All right. Slide that over like that. All right. Save it. Close it. And then open it up again. And there we go. Okay. So I'm seeing two fields from the contact table this is actually based on the contact table because the only customer id in this query that we made is from the contact table and we can't edit information that we bring in from any other tables so if we're back in the contact query for example if you want to add email address go ahead right right click design view you want to see his email address too add that save it close it come back into this form whoop wrong one this guy Right, design view. And then we can add that out here. Add existing fields. There it is. Drag it in. Drop it there. Get rid of that. Little label, right? Slide it up here. And then I'm going to use the format painter and just copy the format from this phone, right? Format painter and then paste. And let's see what we got. Save it. Close it. Open it back up again. All right, looks good. And now if I decide I want to change, let's say this fought the Klingons wasn't James Kirk. Let's say it was Picard. Change it to Picard. And look at that. This information changes over here because we changed who the contact was from. Okay. And if I add a new one down here, new contact, right? I got to specify who it is. Okay. And then his information gets pulled in. Looks like we don't have a phone number for Mel. Okay. So now there's a different direction you can approach this from. So the bottom line is you want to have just one table in a form that is the table you are allowed to edit. Okay. If you want to edit the other fields in that table, you have to go about it a different way. Now, in the extended cut for the members, I will show you a couple of different things. First, we'll make a double click event. So you can double click on the customer here and open up the customer form. That's easy. I've showed you that before in a bunch of different videos, but then We'll also make it so you can edit these fields out here, okay? But we'll pop up a prompt that says, are you sure you want to edit the email address in the customer table? We're going to prompt the user and say, just so you are aware, we're going to be changing data in a different table. And you have to ask if they're sure, and it'll say yes or no. So that's going to be covered in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. And gold members get the code vault and they can download these databases. Hope you learned something and we'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month, 
after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for Tech Hub questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are gonna keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like level one, level two is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.